Hey guys, Josh here, and today we are back on Kickstarter. There's a new campaign I wanted to take a look at. It just started today, and it's called The Gods Fabled the Soil Frontier, and it is an open world fantasy farming game. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the trailer, and then we'll take a look at the whole campaign, and I'll give you my first impressions on this project. So as soon as I heard about this game, I wanted to make a video to check out the campaign with you guys. And actually a few hours ago, the developer reached out to me and they actually offered me a referral link, which I will put in the description of this video. So if you want to support this game on Kickstarter and you use my referral link, you will be supporting my channel at the same time. So I want to thank the developer of this game for this opportunity. And they also give me complete freedom to talk about the game, whether it is positive or negative. So I'm just going to go through the campaign and give you my honest thoughts. And yeah, if you want to support the game and my channel, the link is in the description. But with all of that being said, let's just jump into it. And we're going to take a look at the trailer. Oh, right away you can tell that they put a lot of work into the animation and like putting the trailer together. And this looks pretty nice. I like the character and the animation. And yeah, it is a farming game. So there is some farming. Oh, I don't know if that's fertilizer or soil. But yeah, some chickens. And it kind of reminds me of Farm Folks. Before Farm Folks was taken over by Crytivo and they changed the art style and everything. Their early version of Farm Folks kind of looked like that with a cell shaded style and yeah that's a very beautiful art style like i like the colors and everything some animals and it is open world this kind of reminds me of like genshin impact or <laughs> breath of the wild oh my gosh look at this the snow i want to see this again this is so beautiful honestly the weather effects and everything there's gonna be npcs Maybe different races? I wonder if you can play as other races. And yeah, it looks very cozy, very charming. And hopefully there's a lot of things to do in this open world. And yeah, the God's Fabled Soul Frontier. And this is all made by one person. It's a solo project. It's currently at 1% of its goal. So as I said, it just started. Their goal is 50,000 Australian dollars. They're currently at 633. So that's a good start. They still have 29 days to go. They've got 14 backers. Also, it looks very similar to Puff Pals Island Skies. I don't know if they're using the same engine, but the lighting is extremely similar and the cell shading as well. So maybe they're using the same engine. I don't know, but it looks good. And let's take a look at the campaign. So as with any good Kickstarter campaign, they have stretch goals. So with 50k, they will make the base game with the basic features and 75k, more crops and more NPC, just more content in general. 100k, larger town and 150k, a second town. So I feel like that's very ambitious. Uh, a second town and 20 NPCs. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. And consoles at 200 Okay, so for all major consoles, I know a lot of people will be wanting to play this on the Switch. Hopefully if it does come to the Switch, of course it's going to take a while, but hopefully it does run well. Because that's a problem we have with a lot of Switch games. But yeah, it would be nice to see this game on console. Yeah, so they've got plenty of stretch goals. One of them being multiplayer at the very end if they get $400,000. And they mentioned here that if they do add multiplayer, the full release, it's going to take a lot longer to complete the game, maybe 50% to 100% more time. And they will make a poll to get the player's feedback, whether they should add multiplayer or focus on other major features if they do reach this goal. So I do like already that they really want to communicate with the players and get their opinion on things. So that's good to see. But yeah, that's a very ambitious list of stretch goals for a solo developer. So let's just keep that in mind and remain cautiously optimistic. And they will plan an alpha access for this game. It is currently planned for early 2023, of course. As with every Kickstarter campaign, the timelines can and probably will change the alpha version of the game. It will be incomplete, features will be missing. 
but it will be a good opportunity for the alpha backers to get an idea of what the game feels like and also provide feedback to the developers so they can improve on it and make changes and make the game better. And of course, we won't be able to carry over saved gameplay from alpha to completed, but that's the same with most games. So nothing surprising here. So it's good that they're upfront about it. So we don't have false expectations or anything like that. So let's read quickly the description of the game. So life back into the lands for an open world fantasy farming experience like no other in the gods fabled soil frontier. Answering a call for help, you'll venture to the long abandoned Palito town where neglected farmlands, empty streets, rundown buildings, vast open landscapes and a great deal of mystery call out to you. Mayor Bolkido and the few remaining residents yearn for a savior, somebody to breathe life not only into the old farmlands, but into the town itself to hopefully restore it to its former glory. As your newly acquired farm finds stable footing and Palito Town stumbles upon a new life, you'll have the chance to offer permanent residence to an abundance of unique characters who all seek a fresh start for themselves. While not tending to the fields, taking care of animals or moving in new residence, there is a massive open world to traverse and explore, secrets to uncover, and mysteries to solve in the God's Fabled Soil Frontier. So it's going to be your typical, you move into an abandoned town and you have to bring life to it again and attract new residents, make some new buildings, and build your farm, take care of some animals. So naturally, you can expect a game like this to have an engaging, mildly complex, fun, rewarding, and ever-changing farming system. So this is the footage, the gameplay that we saw in the trailer. That's one thing I got so far. We didn't see so much gameplay. Uh, the trailer was well put together, but we don't know too much how the gameplay will feel like. But... Yeah, so we get a little glimpse of the farming. So now the question that we always want to know, how does the God's Fabled Soul Frontier expand upon the tried and tested farming mechanics we're all familiar with? Well, there's far too much information surrounding the farming system to fit here. So here are just a few cool features. And before we jump into these features, I really like that they're focusing on expanding the tried and tested farming mechanics because in most farming games right now, we get dozens of farming games every year and most of them don't try anything new with the farming. It's always the same basic plant a crop, water a crop, harvest it. Sometimes you have fertilizer or like something a little bit more complex, but usually it's always very simple. So let's see how they can expand. That's really what I'm looking for in farming games. And I always thought if I were to create a farming game, I would like deeper farming mechanics. So let's jump into it and see how they are going to do that. So in this game, crops are not season dependent, they're condition dependent. This means that although any crop can technically be planted at any time of the year, each crop requires a bare minimum and or maximum set of conditions in order to survive. Too much moisture and a gromato will rot, not enough sunlight per day and a rucumba won't grow to full size, too cold a temperature and a nanaya will never ripen and so on. I don't know if these are hybrid crops or if they're just like fictional <laughs> crops or if it's like a joke I don't get or something. I'm not too sure, but as you can see, you can get the idea. So crops will need a certain amount of water, a certain amount of sunlight and a right temperature. So I think that's a really good idea. You'll have to keep all of these little things in mind. For example, if your crop doesn't like too much moisture and you plant it in fall when it rains a lot, maybe it will rot. So it's better to plant it in summer or maybe you plant it in fall, but you don't water it. You just let the rain do its job. Or maybe if you plant something that needs sunlight in winter, maybe there's going to be some kind of tool you can use for like artificial sunlight or something like that. So I'm guessing we'll have different tools and things to complement these conditions. So I think this kind of condition system has a lot of potential, but then again, it all depends on how it will be implemented. And along with the required specific conditions to survive, each crop has a range of conditions that if met will cause the plant to thrive. So that's going to give you higher quality and better profits or even an inheritance of quality in the resulting crafted foods item. So yeah, if you don't meet the conditions, your crops will die. If you do meet the conditions, then they will thrive. And they're typically weather related. You'll need to repair the old radio to receive a basic forecast. So that's good. Maybe, for example, if you see it's raining tomorrow, maybe you shouldn't water crops today and something like that. 
And next, so some crops and plants have an area of effect or AOE, buff or nerf that affects other plants or crops around them. If certain crops are within range of each other, they can give each other effects or even change properties. For example, a full-grown fidger next to a gromito has a chance to give the harvested gromito a spicy attribute. And that's also one thing I always wanted to see in a farming game. So in real life farming, there's this thing called like companion planting. So if certain crops are near each other, they will help each other out and you can get like a bigger yield or like better fruits and like with the pollinators and everything. And some other crops, if they're beside each other, sometimes they can have negative effects. So if they can implement something like that in the game, that would be amazing. Because also one problem I often see in farming games is oftentimes you're going to be encouraged to just plant the most valuable crop. For example, if pineapples are the most valuable crops, you're going to be kind of encouraged to just plant a whole field of pineapple to make the most money. But if you get a benefit from having other crops near each other, then I think it will encourage the player to plant not only pineapples, but also something else that will make the pineapple better. So yeah, I think that's a good way to encourage players to diversify their field and plant different things. All right, so let's go to the next point. So that's the produce tags. Each individual crop you grow and harvest will be unique. This information is conveyed through produce tags. Upon ready to harvest, Parik, a legendary retired farmer whose joints unfortunately restrict him from working too hard, will proudly grade your crops in the early morning, attaching tags in the process. The type of information displayed on a tag can vary per crop, as some are crop specific. Every tag will display weight and color, two of the basic measurements of produce affected by weather conditions and soil moisture. If a crop takes on a special attribute as mentioned in the AOE section above, that will also be shown on the tag. So I think basically what this means is that every time a crop is ready to harvest, it will kind of be evaluated depending on how well you met the conditions of that crop and the area of effect. And so you're going to get that tag on that specific crop. So each crop will be different and that will affect the value of the crop and its quality if you use it in cooking or crafting or something like that. So yeah, every crop will have their own stats that will follow them through their growth. And when they're ready, they're going to get that little tag. They also mentioned that there will be some magical items that can aid your plants surviving in unsurvivable conditions. So that's nice. And there's going to be also fertilizers, pesticides, trimming, climbing plant structures, which is also something I've always wanted to see in a farming game. Higher helping hands, that is very useful as well. Worker, animals, and much more. The farming system in the God's Fable Soil Frontier is rich and diverse. You'll be surprised how deep it does go, and you'll never be left bored with the same repetitive task, as every growable crop is different. Just like in real life, I really like to see this. As I said before, um, I love to see the emphasis on the actual farming and I just hope it's not going to be too complex. I like the diversity and I like that they're adding lots of different things like the conditions and the pesticides and the trimming and everything. But I hope it's also not too complex where it's kind of a headache every time you want to do farming. But I love a little bit of complexity just so it's not always the same. Just water every crop every day. Really mindless and repetitive farming. We've had farming games for many, many years and the formula almost never changes and that's something I want to see change. I want to see slightly more complex farming. So yeah, I'm excited for that. If they can deliver on this uh, and make it work, that sounds very, very exciting. And of course, there's going to be livestock as well. And just like the crops, livestock will have sets of conditions to survive. So taking care of the chickens or the chickens, as they call them here, and the cows or komus, they will have different conditions. So maybe some animals can go a few days without eating, or maybe they like a specific type of food. Maybe they like to be outside a certain time of day and things like that. So once again, I'm looking forward to seeing some complexity in taking care of the animals. And also, as you can see, they are very, very cute. Look at that little chicken. And apparently they're going to help you on your farm. That's what they said uh, a little bit earlier, that we're going to have worker animals and much more. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how you can see the little chicken doing something here. Maybe they can eat the bugs 
or something that are trying to eat the crops. I'm not too sure, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how the crops and animals interact with each other. There's also going to be character customization as expected in the most farming game or life sim games. Let's have options. As you can see, you can change the top, the bottom, the shoes, the accessories. And it's going to be regardless of gender. So you can express yourself however you want with the clothes that you want. You can mix and match the clothes. So character creation is good to see. And there's going to be crafting. Also, pretty common feature in most farming game. So we don't know too much about the crafting. There's no screenshots or video or anything showing the crafting process. But basically what they say here is that pretty much everything will have a purpose for crafting. For example, if you make butter, not only will the butter increase the sale price, but it will also have another use. So maybe for cooking or maybe to feed your animals or something like that. Every item you craft will have a use outside of selling. So that's good to see. And there's going to be different processing stations like a furnace, work table, and all of that. So nothing really, really special here. Uh, I think the focus will really be on the farming. The crafting seems like a basic crafting system, which is nice. You don't have to go all the way into all of the different systems. You can have a more complex farming and a simple crafting. I think uh, that's good. And another thing we'll be able to do is to rebuild Palito Town. So you'll have to collect raw building materials, refine those logs and beams and planks. So with the crafting, all the crafting stations. And then there's going to be building mini games for building. So I wonder if it's going to be like where you can really build the things by yourself or if you can choose where the buildings are going to be or if it's just you give the resources and you do the building minigame and then the building is there in a preset position. So I think either is fine. I'm just wondering uh, how it's going to be like. But yeah, I'm sure it's going to be nice to see the town grow from a decrepit, abandoned town to a beautiful, thriving Palito town. So... That's going to be one aspect of the game. And then friends. So you won't be alone. Uh, maybe at first you will. But the more you build the town, the more people are going to join you. And also there's going to be combat. And one of the things in this game that I find interesting is that the combat will be toggleable. So if you want combat, you can turn it on. If you don't want combat, you can turn it off. And I was wondering about this, I actually asked the developer and he told me that if you have the combat turned off, there should be an NPC that will sell the resources that you would normally get from monsters. So if you like a peaceful experience, you will be able to experience the game and do everything without having to fight. But if you like a little bit of action, you will be able to do that as well. So I like the flexibility here. So yeah, I like to see that. And there's going to be exploration, so there's going to be dungeons, there's going to be resources to gather. Uh, so as I said, it kind of looks kind of like Genshin Impact or Breath of the Wild, like a big, beautiful, lush, green, open world. And hopefully there's going to be a lot. As it says here, what good is a massive open world fantasy farming game if there is nothing to do in the wild? Well, lucky you, there's plenty. So you'll spend your time filling out the many page compendium, documenting the undiscovered minerals, ores, min animals, enemies, fossils, and much more found in these lands. I really like this snowy area, I like the weather. It just looks so nice. So if you play with the combat toggled on, you'll be able to clear out enemy camps and dungeons. And look at that beach. Uh, that looks so nice. You'll also be able to ride around on a bird. So I guess that's going to make traveling a little bit faster. And there's going to be things to collect. And yeah, hopefully there's going to be a lot of things to do in this beautiful open world. It's kind of impressive that this was made by one person. Uh, but yeah, let's keep going. So here you can see the reward tier. So the first one is the early bird. So there's 500 spots for this one. If you're quick for 22 Australian dollars or 15 USD, you will get the game a little bit earlier, a few months before release, and it's expected for early 2024, but it's not the alpha access. If you want the alpha access, it's gonna be 45 Australian and 31 USD. I just wanna check in Canadian 
how much that would be. That would be $40 Canadian. Yeah, so that will give you access to the alpha, which is expected in March 2023. But keep in mind, this timeline can change. And then we've got all of the other tiers. I'm not going to go through everything because there is a lot. If you have $3,000 to spend on this game, you can do that if you'd like. Yeah, lots of options. So I'll put a link once again to the Kickstarter in the description. So if you want to read through everything, feel free to do that. And now let's learn a little bit about the developer. So the developer is Zoji. And he's a solo game developer, as I said, and he's been wanting a farming game to this scale going on for a decade now. Throughout years of learning countless personal hobby projects, freelancing for indie dev companies and honing my skills, I finally arrived at the destination of having the ability to develop the God's Fabled Soil Frontier on my own. Although I am a solo developer and wouldn't change it for the world, I do need help from time to time. I have a network of game developer friends who lend thoughts and advice on my work. We even bounce some ideas off of each other at times. One area I have little experience in is the production of music, something crucial in a game like this. In saying that, I'm thrilled to introduce Jolene. Jolene is going to be composing all the music for the game. She created the music for the Kickstarter trailer and the rest of her work is fantastic. I look forward to working with Jolene throughout the development process. So we heard the music in the trailer. It was pretty good. So I'm looking forward to what else Jolene will create. It seems like Zoji is pretty competent and he knows what he's talking about. Uh, the only thing I'm a little worried is that he is a solo developer. So that's always uh, something to keep in mind, especially if you take into account all of the... Uh, all of the goals here. So I couldn't understand the base game releasing in 2024 uh, if there is no stretch goal. But if he wants to make another city and like a console port and so much more content, different farm types, uh, the ability to open your own shop and multiplayer, uh, I think we can expect a longer timeline than 2024 if he's by himself. Because uh, I don't think he's planning to hire anyone. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Maybe I would back this game without expecting to play soon. Uh, maybe it's going to be a little bit later. I don't know. It's just my thoughts on it. I want to give my honest thoughts uh, on everything. And here we can see the development timeline. Below is a month-by-month -month outline of my development goals and focuses. But I don't see the timeline. <laughs> But he intends on reviewing the development time at the end of each month and to analyze it and understand if he's on track. One thing to keep in mind is that timeline will change. So that's very similar to what I was just saying. Maybe if you back this game, maybe it's going to be 2025, maybe 2024, maybe later. But yeah, just one thing to keep in mind. And that's pretty much it. Uh, then there's a disclaimer that shows that everything shown is a prototype and the game is not complete it's not like yeah there's still a lot of work to do and he picked kickstarter because he doesn't want to have to rely on investors and publishers and he wants to keep his creative freedom and all of that stuff and he is working full-time on development so that's good to see but he needs to pay rent and eat which is understandable that's something we all have to do so yeah i am hoping that this kickstarter campaign is successful so overall, from reading this, this whole campaign, I can feel that this developer is really passionate about this game. It's really a project that they love. And I'm sure this project, I'm confident that this project will see the light of day eventually, but it might take some time. However, I like what I'm seeing. And sometimes some games are just over ambitious, but I feel like this one, even though it is, quite ambitious and they want to do an open world and a lot of things it's also not too much right so there's going to be rebuilding the town there's going to be crafting uh character customization livestock and farming but they're not promising like hundreds of different features and like you can do this and that and that it seems like it's pretty focused on a few elements uh instead of trying to do everything so i think that's good to see and as I said, I like the complexity in the farming. So yeah, these are my thoughts on this game so far. Uh, please, guys, take a look at the campaign. Let me know what you think of this game. Let me know if you decide to back this game. The chicken is just so cute. And this game looks so good overall. So yeah, I can't wait to know more about it. They're currently at 700 Australian dollar. 
Uh, so they're getting money little by little. It is going up. So yeah, hopefully they have a successful campaign. And I'm going to make sure to keep an eye on this game whenever there's some updates. Um, whenever things happen with this project, I'll let you guys know. Because yeah, it does look like a very good game. Um, it's still at 700. But anyway, <laughs> it is going up since I started recording this video. It did go up a little bit. So... Yeah, they were at 14 packers, and now they're at 16. Anyway, this video has been <laughs> going on for a little while, so that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.